You're listening to today's inspirational message on pursuing God with Gene Apple. Here's Gene. Well, it's Friday, and I'm so glad you could join me for day number five of 21 Days of Prayer. And uh, I hope you're planning to join us at an Eastside campus this weekend or online as we continue in our series on the Lord's Prayer. Tonight, I'm going to be with our team at our newest campus in Irvine for our campus rally. Dinner there, 545, worship, 630. Don't forget there's child care. You know, over the years, I've talked to many individuals going through marital problems. And when I ask them, would you like to pray about it? You know what they want me to pray about more often than not? Essentially, their prayer request is, God, change my spouse. (laughs) Friends, I know that prayer. I've got that prayer down. So when I pray with them, I I think they expect me to pray against their spouse too, but I usually pray something like, God, I I pray that you'll give this person the willingness to face whatever he or she needs to face on their side of the equation that might be pushing their spouse away. You see, I I think there's a kind of, uh, another kind of way to abuse prayer. Yesterday, we looked at the danger of being on proximity to God's divine power and how it can lead to prayer abuse for like our own personal agendas. A couple of the disciples wondered if Jesus wanted them to pray down fire from heaven for some people who had like inconvenienced them, which (laughs) fire from heaven seems like a little overkill, right? Now we've all said prayers like this. We've all abused prayer for our own agendas. Jesus understood how people were wired up and he knew that if we weren't careful, prayer could uh, wind up being like uh, (laughs) strokes on an Aladdin's lamp. And so in Matthew 6, in the Lord's Prayer, He gave us the components of God honoring prayer. Now, most of you know the Lord's Prayer. It's the most widely recited prayer in history. And some of you might think the reason that God gave the Lord's Prayer might be for us to recite it like several thousand times rather mindlessly, thinking that God's pleased when we do it that way. But I don't think that's why Jesus gave us the Lord's Prayer. It it wasn't intended to be recited. I He intended it to be a model of the components that go into a healthy, authentic, God-honoring, balanced prayer, the kind of praying that would keep us from abusing prayer, getting unbalanced in our prayer. Now, the first component needed in balanced praying is the component of worship. How does the Lord's Prayer begin? We find it in Matthew 6.10. He says, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Now, I don't think Jesus was staying, saying, start every prayer with these exact words, but I think he was saying, near the top of your prayer time ought to be the component of just worshiping God. Near the top of your prayer time, you ought to say, Father, before I start on my wish list, I just want to worship you, hallow your name, say you're a great God. I'm honored to be one of your kids. You're truthful with me. You're gracious to me. You're loving to me. You're forgiving of me. And before I go any further, I simply, I want to say I worship you. A second component needed to avoid prayer abuse is submission. Submission is where we pray, Lord, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That's saying, God, I want your will done on earth in my life. I I want your will done in my relationships, my marriage, my parenting, my vocation, uh, in the use of my money, in my service to you. Submission is saying, God, you're the potter. I'm the clay. Mold me, make me into what you want me to be. All too often, we jump straight to our wish list, right? Lord, fix my finances. Lord, bring home our daughter. Lord, change my spouse. But what's conspicuously absent from those well-intentioned prayers? It's us crying out, God, you're worthy of my worship, and I only want what you want. Friends, can I be honest with you? If I don't pray remembering this kind of pattern, including a time of worship to God and submission in my prayer, I can slip right into prayer abuse. It's very important for me to begin my prayer time by saying, God, I worship you. And I want your way in life more than my way. And God, I begin this prayer today just acknowledging who you are, that you're holy, and you're the only one worthy of our worship and our lives. Thanks for being a good God. And we pray for your will to be done 
in our lives on earth as it is in heaven. May up there come down here. And we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Have a great weekend. I'll catch you back here tomorrow. You're listening to today's inspirational message on pursuing God with Gene Apple. 